hello everyone so in this lecture i am going to explain you what is transaction management we are going to learn step by step so how important transaction management and what is the purpose of transaction management and uh, what are all the problems are available in uh, transaction management and how those problems are going to resolve in transaction management we are going to learn in depth concept of transaction management so most of the people are having confusion on transaction management and also if you don't understand each and every concept in transaction management the basic concept without understanding those so you cannot understand transaction management okay so if you want to understand transaction management you should learn the basics of transaction management so in this lecture i am going to explain in very simple what is transaction management we'll go step by step so if i explain everything all together in one lecture so you guys will get confused and most of the people also will get confused so what i will do so we'll go step by step each and every video i will create a, a each and every concept separate video so that you can understand transaction management very cleanly and very properly okay so let's assume in this lecture you just learn what is transaction management and in second video i will explain what are all the properties available in transaction management and how it is important and what is the purpose of transaction management and next another lecture i will explain you what are all the problems or occur or what are all the possibilities of problems may occur in transaction management and how we are going to resolve those problems in transaction management so if you learn these all three concepts you guys will become a master in transaction management okay so let me talk about what is transaction okay so in real time environment or in real world so most of the people are ordering online food right in swiggy or zomato or in uh, ordering in flipkart or ordering in amazon or uh, and uh, transferring amount from one bank account to another bank accounts and uh, any database operation if you are inserting employee details in database or if you are uh, reading employee details from database so any real time example you can take so uh, this kind of uh, all examples we can call it as a transaction so let me tell you one simple example here so let's talk about fund transfer okay so we have two bank accounts Ro uh, rohit sharma and virat kohli so as part uh, in first step what i'm uh, in uh, in first example what i'm going to explain so we are in transaction one we are depositing 100 rupees to rohit sharma let's assume we are depositing 100 rupees to rohit sharma so then rohit sharma bank balance will be 100 rupees so this is nothing but one single transaction similarly in tran uh, in uh, we are in second step so we are trying to debit 50 rupees from virat kohli so let's say virat kohli is having virat kohli also having 100 rupees initial account okay, in initial amount okay so in we are debiting 50 rupees from virat kohli so then what is the total amount of virat kohli's bank balance so then it will be 50 rupees 
so this is also nothing but one transaction so whatever operations we are performing in database or in your bank account is nothing but one transaction so depositing uh, 100 rupees to rohit sharma is one transaction and debiting 50 rupees from virat kohli's bank account is nothing but one transaction and so in real world so let's assume this both are individual transaction so this both are individual transaction in real world a transaction can contain multiple database operations as well so nothing but one trans as uh, we can execute multiple database operations as part of one single transaction so here this is one single transaction and here second step will be another single transaction so both are individual transactions so let's take in second example which is showing here so let's take one single transaction may have multiple database operations okay so in this example uh, in as part of single transaction we have two steps so step 1 depositing 100 rupees to rohit sharma's account and debiting 50 rupees from virat kohli so both are under one single transaction okay let's assume both are under one single transaction so let's uh, assume one success scenario so in step 1 as part of single transaction in step 1 uh, we are depositing 100 rupees to rohit sharma's account so initially rohit sharma's account is having 100 so after depositing 100 rupees so rohit sharma bank balance will be 200 and virat kohli's bank balance will be 100 only okay so as per a single transaction in step 1 we just deposit 100 rupees to rohit sharma and rohit sharma's bank balance will be 200 and in as part of single transaction step 2 we are debiting 50 rupees from rohit sharma sorry virat kohli so that time virat kohli's bank balance will be 50 rupees because we are debiting from rohit sharma so both steps are both both database operation together one single transaction so if 100 rupees are uh credited to rohit sharma's account and uh, 50 rupees are debited from virat kohli's accounts so let's assume both transactions are successful so that time rohit sharma also will happy and virat kohli also will happy as part of single transaction both the steps are successful let's assume both the steps are successful uh now as part of same single transaction and uh, depositing 100 rupees to rohit sharma is successful let's assume step 2 debiting 50 rupees from rohit sharma is failed let's assume rohit sharma uh debiting uh, 50 rupees from virat kohli's account is failed let's assume it is failed so then virat kohli's account is having 100 rupees only so this time second step is failed and first step is success so whole all together what we can call it is inconsistent transaction because so as part of single transaction we have to perform two database operations so uh, in, if you think about real world so both the operation uh, database operation should be successful or both the database operation should be fail so it should be like that so we this we can this concept we can call it as a transaction management okay so when we, whenever we are talking about transaction so when uh, 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 any example you can take guys okay not only two two of a database operation either single database operation or multiple database operations so as part of single transaction so if you are performing any database operations either two transactions or either three transaction or one transaction so whenever you are performing all or one single transaction either the transaction should be success or all transactions should be failed so this is nothing but transaction management
so but here what is the problem so in first case in first scenario uh, transaction is successful in second scenario as part of single transaction virat kohli's account is failed let's assume it is failed so that time this transaction will be inconsistent right so how we are going to resolve this issue as part of spring framework or spring transaction management so that is the purpose in previous example i have declared uh, at the rate transactional annotations right so if you declare all whatever database operations you are going to perform as part of single method so if you declare with at the rate transactional annotation so if you performing two database operations so both should be fail or both should be success so how we are how we are going to resolve that with the help of at the rate transactional annotation so if you specify at the rate transaction annotation whenever you are performing database operations as part of single transaction either uh, uh, both the transactions should be successful or both the transactions should be failed if you don't specify at the rate transactional and let's assume if you don't specify at the rate transactional annotation so what will happen so in this example if you don't specify without transactional annotation uh, as part of single transaction if you don't specify at the rate transactional annotation what will happen uh, uh, it might be rohit sharma transaction will be success and virat kohli transaction may fail or both the transaction is successful so that time if it both success then well and good so if it is one is success and another is fail and virat kohli's uh, account is uh, virat kohli's deposit is uh, debit uh, debit transaction will be failed then rohit sharma will be happy if rohit sharma's deposit is fail and virat kohli is success then virat kohli is happy so this kind of transactions we have to handle manually by, by specifying at the rate transactional annotation so either both the transaction should be fail or both the transaction should be successful if you specify at the rate transactional annotation if you don't specify at the rate transactional annotation uh, then there is a there there might be both the transaction will be successful or one one will be success and another will be fail so that this will be invalid transaction right as part of single transaction one transaction will be success and step two step one is success step two is fail or step two is success or step one is fail so that time the transaction is invalid right so uh, when we are trying to do two operations as part of single transaction whether both should be succeeded or both should be fail so then it will be well and good so if it is uh, one is success another is fail and uh, one, another is success and this one is fail so then it will be invalid transaction so let's assume i will tell you one real time example so uh, that will i will discuss later so now you got the concept right so uh, how important it is uh, transaction management and at the rate transactional annotation so the purpose of defining at the rate transactional annotation nothing but either uh, both the transaction should be successful or both the transaction should be fail so if you don't if you specify at the rate transactional let's assume if you don't specify at the rate transactional then uh, it, it there there is a chances of whether one if any one is fail one is success then that transaction will be invalid transaction if both are success then the transaction will be successful transaction if one is success another one is fail and for example step one is success step two is fail and step 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 one is fail and step two is success that time this transaction will be invalid so to overcome that problem so we have a at the rate transactional annotation to maintain consistency of transaction whether both should be success whether both should be fail so we need to specify where the rate transactional to make it whether all are succeed or all are fail 
if you don't specify either uh, there is a chance of one is success and another one is fail so that time invalid transaction so now you got it right what is the importance of at the rate transactional annotation i hope you guys understood what is the importance of at the rate transactional annotation okay so in next lecture i will go step by step guys in next lecture i will explain you what are all the properties available in transaction management and what are all the problems are available in transaction management and how we are going to resolve those problems in transaction management okay guys so if you are all watching newly so you can subscribe my channel uh, www.youtube.com slash rasul hyphen shake slash playlist okay so then go to the channel and you can subscribe to watch all the videos so my channel name will be java cafeteria so it has spring boot uh, videos and i am going to upload angular js microservices and jpa and uh, uh, and mojito framework so all the concept i am going to cover in this channel okay so you guys can subscribe and you can learn one by one i have i have explained in very step by very clear and very simple manner okay guys so if you like the video you can subscribe and you can share okay thank you guys will i will catch you in next lecture